Jamaican politics has seen its fair share of ups and downs, with prominent figures often straddling the line between power and controversy. Among those who have walked this fine line is Philip Paulwell, a name once associated with idealism and political promise. However, as the years unfolded, his career took on a dark and controversial turn marked by a series of scandals and allegations of corruption. Ultimately, it led to his resignation from the People's National Party, both in 2007 and then in 2021. Now then, if cats have nine lives, then they must look at the energy minister, Philip Paulwell, with considerable envy. Paulwell, it seems, not only has multiple lives in politics, he also has the hide of a rhinoceros. Whether he has the memory of an elephant is debatable. His catalogue of screw-ups is longer than your average anaconda. In this article, we will delve into the political journey of Philip Paulwell, tracing the path from his early days in politics to his recent fall from grace. If you enjoy videos like these or you want to see more videos like these, please give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to Elite Jamaica, consider doing so as that really does help the channel. A promising start. Philip Paulwell's entry into the world of Jamaican politics was marked by youthful exuberance, idealism, and a vision of achieving the highest office in the land, that of Prime Minister. He joined the political ranks in the 1980s under the mentorship of Cliff Hughes and quickly rose through the ranks. Paulwell became the youngest person at the age of 29 to head a public institution when he was appointed as managing director or trade administrator of the trade board in 1991. With his charisma and ambition, he gained the favor of Michael Manley and secured a seat in the House of Representatives for the East Kingston and Port Royal constituency. The name Philip Paulwell soon became synonymous with controversy. Throughout his tenure in government, he was embroiled in a string of scandals and allegations that earned him the unflattering moniker of accident prone. Some of the major controversies that plagued his political career included the Intech Fund, the NetServe, the Cement Crisis, Solutria, the Cuban Lightbulb Crisis, and the infamous Trafigura scandal. First, we take a look at the Cuban light bulb scandal. One of the most significant scandals that shook Paulwell's career was the Cuban light bulb scandal. It involved a gift of 4 million fluorescent light bulbs from the Cuban government, which was intended to save energy and benefit the nation. Paulwell, who initially secured the gift for his constituency, expanded it into a national project. His ministry was responsible for the distribution of bulbs and he appointed his junior minister, Kern Spencer, to administer the project. However, the project came under scrutiny with allegations of misappropriation and mismanagement. The new energy minister, Clive Mullings, alleged that over $117 million was misspent. Paulwell faced accusations, but he vehemently denied any wrongdoing asserting that he had allowed the party to investigate the matter. This scandal was a blow to his reputation and marked the beginning of a downward spiral. The Intec Fund and Failed Promises Paulwell's tenure also saw the establishment of the Intec Fund, aimed at developing Jamaica's IT sector and creating thousands of jobs. However, many companies, mostly overseas-based, received loans from the fund with promises to establish call centers in Jamaica. The results were far from what was anticipated, with many companies failing to deliver their commitments. In the case of NetServe, this foreign-based company was granted a loan of $180 million, with a commitment to provide 3,000 jobs in the first year, boosted to 10,000 jobs within three years. But after a few months, reports surfaced that the company was unable to honor its bills or meet its payroll, all while the employment figure was nowhere near the 3,000 projected. Paulwell's apparent lack of judgment was papered over by P.J. Patterson, who blamed it on youthful exuberance. 
the controversies continue. In 2006, when the faulty cement crisis was galloping out of hand, leaving the construction industry reeling and an approximate 30,000 workers idled, Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller was forced to take over the reins, leaving the impression that Paulwell was overwhelmed and inept. By the middle of the year in 2006, there was more bad news for Paulwell. He issued a cellular operating license to a company named Solutria, formerly Wiscom Technologies Inc. The license would become effective June 1, 2006, and the full payment of Jamaican $510 million would be made by the end of June that year. But that deal too became embroiled in controversy when it was revealed in July that year that the sums for the license were not paid at the due date and that attorney at law Minette Palmer, who represented Salutria, was also an advisor to Paulwell. It is also alleged that Palmer held the shares in Salutria, Jamaica, the group's subsidiary that would operate the local cellular network. Salutria, it was reported, was awarded the license, although only $15 million was paid to the government. Company founder Keith Walker eventually relinquished interest in the cellular project at the end of July. The Trafigura scandal resurfaces As if his political woes were not enough, the Trafigura scandal resurfaced, implicating Paulwell in allegations of bribery. The Dutch believed that Trafigura Bahir, which traded oil for Jamaica on the international market, had bribed Jamaican public officials in 2006 when the PNP was given $31 million. Paulwell was also named among those individuals the Dutch police wished to interview as part of their investigations. And let me say this, there are lots of scandals that Philip Paulwell was involved in. These are just a few of those. Philip Paulwell's political journey has been marked by ambition, controversy, and a series of scandals that have cast a shadow over his once promising career. Despite his resilience and ability to maintain his position within the PNP, his legacy is marred by allegations of corruption and mismanagement. The Cuban lightbulb scandal and the Intech Fund's failures are key chapters in his political story and his connection to the Trafigura scandal only added to the cloud of suspicion. Now, as 2023 heads towards its conclusion, it has emerged that one of Philip Paulwell's baby mothers and 10-month-old daughter has been kidnapped and monstrously executed and their bodies burnt on the orders of another of Mr. Paulwell's baby mothers. This is a heinous crime that has not only rocked Jamaica, but internationally too. As the Jamaican political landscape evolves, the question remains, is it bad luck on the part of Mr. Paulwell, or will this be a farewell to the accident-prone politician? Only time will tell whether Philip Paulwell can overcome the controversies that have defined his career and personal life. Will the latest atrocious and despicable murders be his political downfall? Do you think that is inevitable? Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And also, let me ask a question. Do you think that Mr. Philip Paulwell is involved in the takeaway of his baby mother and 10-month-old daughter? Let me know what you think, as this is a really delicate topic at the moment, but we will be sure to take a look at this topic in upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to drop a like and a comment. Don't forget to subscribe.